Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome back to our Objective-C video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, we're gonna look at one of my favorite features of Objective-C, categories. Okay, so why are categories important in Objective-C? Well, consider the case where you want to add a new method to an object in your game or your app. So for example, say you really like NSString, but you really wish there was a handy method on NSString that would say, capitalize the first three letters of the string, but let, leave the rest of the letters in the string default. Well, in the old days without categories, you could subclass NSString, and instead of using NSString, you would use your subclass method or your subclassed version of NSString, and then it would have that new method. But categories allow you to add a new method to every instance of a particular class without subclassing it, without changing the type of the class. You just use the NSString as usual, and all of a sudden it has a new method. It's really handy to make your code nice and clean. You'll see it used very commonly in Objective-C development. Now there's one caveat with this. You can add new methods to a class, but you cannot add new data to a class. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about categories. Okay, so let's take a look at how the syntax works with categories. Over here on the left, you see you create a header file. And the header file, the naming convention is you usually name it whatever the classes you're extending, and then a plus sign, and then whatever you want to name your category. So for example, in the NS string example I was saying, it would probably be named NS string plus capitalization additions or something like that. Now you don't, this is just a convention, so you could name it something different, but uh, most people do it this way, so it's good practice. Um, so the next thing is you import whatever class you're trying to extend, and then you say at interface and the name of the class you're extending, and then inside parentheses, you put whatever the name of your category is. So another convention is uh, categories are often named something additions, so like capitalization additions in the example we've been talking about is fine. And then you list out your various methods that you want to add to the class, and at the end you put at end. Then over to the .m file, you import the header file, and you do the same thing as in the header file, but instead of at interface, you use at implementation, and then you just implement the methods. Okay, so let me show you a little demo of using categories. So I have here our good old friend date calculator from earlier in this tutorial series. Let's say we want to extend this class to add another method. Wouldn't it be nice if we could call a method on calc called, say, log, and it would log out some information about the class? Now, of course, we could simply go inside date calc calculator and add that method, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's pretend that we don't have the source code for date calculator. Let's say that somebody else wrote this and it's in another library, maybe Apple wrote it, for example, and we want to be able to extend it to add this method without having to subclass it or anything like that. So how can we do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, New, File, and uh, there's actually a template all set up for us to use called the iOS Coco C Objective-C Category Template. So I'm going to select that, and it asks me, what do I want to name the category? We'll call this Logging Additions. And we want it to be a category on the Date Calculator object. So I'll just finish creating this. And looking at the header file here, I see that it has used the syntax to create a category. Again, the syntax is at interface, the name of the class you're making a category on, and then parentheses, the name of your category. And between the at interface and the at end, that's where you list your messages. So we're just going to make a single one called log. And then we will go to the .m and implement it. And I've already written this code to save a little bit of time. I'll just paste it in. So it's very simple. It just logs out a little bit of information about this class. Now notice that I have to use the properties here because this category does not know about the instance variables because they're private to the .m file. But I can use the properties like you see here. So now that I've done this, switching back to appdelegate.m, all I have to do to use the category is import the header file. And then I can call my new method here. And down here I see my new message, a calculator for Ray, age 34. All right, that's it for this video tutorial, but as always, I want to leave you off with a challenge to play around with this on your own. So I want you to create a new category on Date Calculator called Range Additions, and it should just have a single additional method called Minimum Age to Date, and it should return the, obviously, Minimum Age to Date. And uh, then just try this out in your application delegate.m to make sure it works. So uh, should be pretty simple, good practice with categories, and I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.